very solid. <laughs> How does God see our prayers? Many times I have prayed and I'll be there, I'll be in my, my bedroom or something in the morning, I'll be praying, and, and it just like feels like the sound just sort of like hits the roof and bounces back to me and not much happens. And, and it's even worse when very serious things are going on. Think of sometimes like we've been praying uh, this last while for, for Kerrigan, cancer, or praying for, for our friend Kristen, lady our age. And, and, and it just feels like, like, where is God? What is he doing? What is he thinking? Like, how does God see my prayers? And thankfully, we are not left just unawares here that we actually get to see a little bit in this text that we just read into God's heart when his people pray. And what a, what a just majestic thing to see into God's heart for his people. And so today we're going to go through this whole story, explain it in, in seven movements very quickly, and then take away five things about how God sees our prayer. So if you're a note taker person, the first seven things, you don't need to write all those down, although they're nice to order the story, but the five things are very important about how God sees our prayer. Hezekiah is going to die. In those days, and we should remember those days, the Assyrians either just got defeated or it's just before. It doesn't actually, it's not temporal here. It's around that time, within a year of the Assyrians besieging Jerusalem. In those days, Hezekiah became sick and was at the point of death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die, you shall not recover. Now, we were just reading a story from a long time ago, but, but you get the, the weight of this. Like the Assyrians are still around. They are the bad guys of the ancient world. They're Darth Vader. They actually have like uh, uh, big car wall carvings that you can still find. And they're just like wall carvings of people up on hooks. Because they are the bad guys and they want you to know they would rather be feared than loved. That's how they did business. And Hezekiah, along with worrying about them, now he's sick. And it's just one of those times where he's just like trouble added on to trouble as if the Assyrians aren't worse. Here I am, sick to the point of death. And then God comes and, well, Isaiah comes with the word of the Lord and says, yes, you are going to die It's so much like life. Sometimes we feel like the worst thing possible has happened to us. And then right on the heels of that, an even more terrible thing. And you have to wonder, where is God? In response to this, Hezekiah prays. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Now, O Lord, please remember how I have walked, in, walked before you in faithfulness and with a whole heart and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. First thing here, we see that he prays to the Lord. Now, you might want to ask, like, why bother praying? Like the Lord just said, you're going to die. Get your house ready. Now, prophetic words of judgment in the Old Testament always carry an implication that God is willing to respond to repentance. 
We've seen this earlier in Kings. Ahab gets a word of the Lord. You're going to be judged by God. He repents. Even Ahab, like the worst king possible. He repents and God relents. When the prophet Noah went to Nineveh, his message wasn't, hey, if you repent, God's going to forgive you. No, it was 30 days, the city's going to be overthrown. That was his only message. And yet they repented. God responded. Hezekiah trusts that there is mercy in God, even though he has been dealt bitter blow after bitter blow, he runs back to the Lord for the healing balm of his grace. Now Hezekiah speaks of his faithfulness in his heart, which faithfulness of the heart is the only kind of faithfulness that's pleasing to God because God looks to men's hearts and not to what's on the outside. Hezekiah is not perfect. But he has walked according to the Mosaic Covenant to the best of his abilities. He did what was right. He tore down the high places. He trusted in the Lord. And there is something to the fact that God is attentive to the righteous. 1 Peter 3, 12, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. And yet we do remember, I just mentioned it, that there is Ahab, who had the blood of Naboth on his hands, and yet God was merciful too. And so the best we can say that God is especially attentive to the righteous, but his mercy is never limited by our sin. And finally, we see that Hezekiah wept bitterly. You cannot buy God's favor with tears. But God hears sincere prayers. God is not so unkind as to overlook your pain. Hezekiah prayed sincerely, pouring out his heart. Next, we see God's response. Turn back and say to Hezekiah, the leader of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. God sees. Beautiful. Behold, I will heal you. God heals. Powerful. On the third day, you shall go up to the house of the Lord and I will I will add 15 years to your life. God answers Hezekiah's prayer and then does even more than he answers. Not only heals him, but adds 15 years to his life. I wonder if he like, was like, oh, I'm going to go skydiving now. It's like, I know, can't die for 15 years. I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. He delivers him. This is why some people think this took place before the Assyrian siege was. I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, bring a cake of figs and let them take and lay it on the boil that he may recover. God heals here, and yet he does so so through a common medical technique in the ancient Near East. And so, yes, it's okay to go to doctors, but trust God and don't use him as kind of a last resort. Like, oh yeah, everything else has failed, now I'm going to go to God. It's like, go to God first, trust in him, and you can go to your doctors and get healing as well. Like like this saying, go to God, not as a last resort, but first, and you can use regular medical healing it's okay now in response to this god gives a sign Uh, hezekiah asks for this sign and isaiah said this shall be the sign to you from the lord that the lord will do the thing that he has promised shall the shadow go forward 10 steps or go back 10 steps so some translations here are going to have sundial some have steps All of the older commentators were just like, sure, this is a sundial. And some of the newer commentators, they think, oh, maybe it's just talking about steps. It was a sundial. Don't worry about it. The newer people, I think, are wrong. And Hezekiah answered, 
It is an easy thing for the shadow to lengthen 10 steps. That would be the way that it would normally go around the sundial. Rather, let the shadow go back 10 steps. Very bold. Now, now God gives this sign on the sundial. And we do remember Jesus said, an evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign. And yet, God in his mercy gives to, Isaac, gives to Hezekiah what he needs. And more for us, that God does give us signs. We are not left without signs as believers even today. Today, we will be taking part of the Lord's Supper, which is a sign of Jesus' body broken for us, his blood poured out for us so that we can remember and believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. We can remember the promise that he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us, how will he not graciously give with him all things? Hezekiah boldly asks for a sign, and God gives it. And the Isaiah prophet called to the Lord, and he brought the shadow back ten steps by which it had gone down on the steps of Ahaz. And if you've been following with us, we've mentioned a few times, Ahaz is a very bad king. And in fact, this whole sundial may be part of his kind of reconstruction after the model of the Arameans and the, and the Assyrians, because he loved the, the uh, foreign ideas. And so this like dial, if this was a movie, you would have watched this dial of Ahaz, that after Ahaz's sin, you would have seen the shadow lengthening on it. And, and every time that something happens, the dial is getting closer to the end. And here, God is going to reset the dial. If it's 10 steps, that would be from the first tick to the last tick if it has like 12 markings. And so God restarts this. Hezekiah has reigned 14 years. He's getting 15 more. He gets to restart his reign. And in fact, it almost represents the kingdom of Judah is going to get a reprieve. They're going to get a new day. Now, I don't know how this happened. If like the earth rotated backwards, which would pretty much like destroy everything on the earth, but physics God can deal with. I just read the Bible. But the point is that God's power is so great that he can do all things. Yes, he can heal Hezekiah. Yes, he can deliver from the Assyrians. Yes, he can heal you, your friend, he can meet your need. He can save a people who are in sin. And then we get Hezekiah and the Babylonians. The Babylonians come. This is right around. The Babylonians are also fighting against the Assyrians. And they are looking for allies. And Hezekiah now, instead of trusting the Lord, he is maybe flirting with trusting the Babylonians. And Hezekiah welcomed them, and he showed them all his treasure house, the silver, the gold, the spices, the precious oil, his armory, all that was found in his storehouses. It's like, yeah, look, I got a lot of stuff to offer if we make a little, you know, partnership here. There was nothing in his house or in all his realm that Hezekiah did not show them. For this mistrust, there's judgment on Hezekiah's sons. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and that which is your father's have stored up to this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And some of your own sons who shall be born to you shall be taken away. They shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Now the story began with Hezekiah going to the wall in earnest prayer when his life was on the line. And it ends with Hezekiah not praying at all. Then said Hezekiah to Isaiah, the word of the Lord that you have spoken is good. For he thought, why not? If there will be peace and security in my days. 
You can see if this was a movie, at this point, the movie scene would cut back to the clock of Ahaz, the sundial of Ahaz, and you would just see the, the shadow lengthen another step. Yes, there was a reprieve, but judgment is still on its way. So, we have this story. Starts out really well and ends a little bit dark. But for us, when we feel like we're praying to the ceiling, what is God's heart? And so we get to see five things here that God wants us to see as we pray. <laughs> the first is that God always wants us to pray. Okay? God always pray without ceasing. It's a command of the New Testament. Twice God brought the clear message of judgment, but they were not the end of a conversation. They were the beginning of one. They were invitations for the Hezekiah to seek his face, not a signal to turn away. And so for us, when life's circumstances get hard, when illness is added to Assyrians, it is not that God wants us to just go sulking off in a corner, sad, take another drug. God wants us to seek his face to, to, to make things right. Hardship is an invitation to prayer. Sometimes what might feel like judgment is actually a call to prayer. Secondly, God acts according to his promises. Now, Hezekiah prays, and we noted this, that Hezekiah prays according to his righteousness. Okay, he prayed, uh, Please remember how I've walked before you in faithfulness and with a whole heart, and yet done what is good in your sight. And yet, when we see this prayer from God's perspective, God doesn't respond to Hezekiah's righteousness. He responds, well, let's, let's read it. Thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I've heard your prayer, I've seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you, a little space. I will defend the city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Twice here, he mentions David. God was moved by Hezekiah's prayer, not because he was saying, well, you've done righteous, I'm going to do good. He moves according to the promise that was given to David. And this happens way back in 2 Samuel 7, that God promised that there would always be a son on the throne of David, that he would rule forever. So God moved according to a promise that he made. God was in Hezekiah's corner because David, because of David. Now, if this is true, how much more is it true for us when we call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? That we are united to him in such a way that he is for us so that we can claim. It says all the promises of God find their yes in him. And so when we come to God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he hears our prayers and answers them, not because of our righteousness, but because of Jesus Christ. Calvin is commentary. This is on Isaiah. It says this. Whenever, therefore, we feel that our own sins hinder us from drawing near to God, in order that we may obtain his favor, let us think of this preface, that although we have been estranged from him by our fault, still he is the father of Christ, who is our head, and in whom our salvation always remains hidden. Even when we are in a bad place, even when it's our own fault, 
we can boldly approach the throne of grace because in Christ, God is still our father and will answer us according to his promise. I should say promises. And there are many. Third, so God always wants us to pray. God acts according to his promises. Third, here we get to see Yes, indeed, God sees our tears. God says, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you. We have a God who sees our tears. He is not impassive to them. In fact, it says... You have kept count of my tossings, put my tears in your bottle. There are many tears in this world, but God cares. God doesn't let one tear of his children fall to the ground in waste, but keeps them in his bottle. Even more, we have a God who has shed tears. Easiest Bible memory verse in the world, Jesus wept. God may not answer our prayers as we might like, but God always cares. God always sees not one tear of his children is in vain. Truly, I have seen your tears, God says. And so pray, pray earnest prayers like Hezekiah, like don't. Like, again, we can't win, win God's favor with our tears. But bring your heart before God because he gloriously sees our tears. Fourth, God acts for his glory. He says, I will defend the city for my own sake. God healed, not because Hezekiah was awesome, but he says, for my own sake. Yes, Hezekiah was a good king. He prayed with tears and this mattered. But what mattered in the end was both his promise, which we've said, and that God would show his glory to the Assyrians and ultimately to the world. And it, and it might seem like, man, you know, I'd rather that God just act for me because of me. But you know, it's even better news that God acts for his own glory. Because his, his love is ultimately rooted, rooted not in us who change every other day, but his love is rooted in himself, which can never change. And so his compassions for us can be new every morning because God does not change. If you've trusted by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, turned away from your sin and trusted in him, you have been joined to him in such a way that his name is on you, that his name is on you, that he loves you with compassion and grace that you are his child and he will defend you because of his honor. God, God's defense of believers is based on his perfection and not our imperfection. And so we can go to God in prayer. And uh, Martin Luther has this line, it's so great, that, that prayer is not overcoming God's reluctance, but laying hold of his willingness because he loves to bless his children. And what happened, happened. But had Hezekiah turned and prayed, maybe God would have ordained things differently. God always wants us to pray. 
So don't think I've got barrier, I can't come to him. God acts according to his promises, which are yours in Christ Jesus. If Christ Jesus is yours by faith, which he can be, trust in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. God, God sees our tears. God acts for his glory. And finally, we see that God's power is unlimited. He heals gloriously this person who was, you know, it's a bad deal if the doctors say you're going to die. It's a really bad deal if God says you're going to die. And God can even heal the illness that God said that he was going to die from. Now, what's the doctor? <laughs> And, I mean, he can even turn the world around <laughs> to show his power. I know that many of us have prayed for many things for a long time that we have not seen an answer to. Loved ones, broken relationships, Sickness, weakness, cancer. Like, be like Hezekiah the first time. And, and lay hold of God's willingness again and again, knowing that no matter how many tears that you shed, God keeps them in his bottle and God is not unresponsive. Knock on the doors of heaven, and God will hear according to his promise for his glory, seeing our pain, to move by his incredible power. And I actually just want to like celebrate God's, God's like work a little bit today. Because we had something happen in prayer meeting this week, which was really cool, is that a year ago I got bad news of a friend of mine friend of mine in ministry, Isaac Lee, he was diagnosed with stage four sarcoma in his hip. It's kind of news. You, know, you hear about it, you hear, and then they went to the doctor. The doctor's like, it's really bad. We're going to have to take off your leg, and that might not even save your life. And he's Korean. He went back to Korea, got a second opinion there, and the doctors there were like, well, yeah, you're probably going to lose your leg. But he asked us to pray. And we, we prayed and, you know, he still, the doctors did stuff. They gave him some stuff and amazingly, like the cancer, like not only responded, the cancer just shrunk and shrunk before they could do surgery. And he walked through those doors a year later, a healed man, praise the Lord. Like God is powerful to heal. And so pray, pray church, pray when it's easy, pray when it's hard, pray in all circumstances, according to all of God's promises, which find their yes in Jesus Christ, with our emotions engaged, waiting for God to decisively act for his glory with unlimited power. Let's pray. Oh Lord, our God, we pray that we would see your heart, that we would know that when we are in our prayer closet and meetings pouring out our hearts for another thing, that you hear us. I pray that we would have eyes to see your response, that we would know that you you work powerfully. I pray that our hearts would turn to you and not lesser things. And the light of your new day would dawn upon us. And that we as a church would pray. In Jesus' name, amen.